Fundamentals of Intelligent Reflecting Surfaces. That is what I'm going to talk about in this video. And I'm Imam Bjornsson, I'm an associate professor at Linship University. And I start with saying something about Massive MIMO. That is the state-of-the-art 5G technology for building base stations. And it consists of having many antenna elements that are active, so you can direct signals up and down from your transmitter in the base station. And it has been developed over the past 10 years, but now it's really a reality. Just in the US, the operator Sprint deployed a thousand sites with this technology. However, even if it says massive in the name, it's not very large. The panels that they deployed is not larger than this, and they contain still 64 antennas in a 2.5 gigahertz band. And it improved their rates in their system by 4 to 20 times, but it's still not anywhere near what people have been talking about in academic literature, where we wanted to have many meters long arrays. And the problem is that you cannot really deploy this in the original way of deploying base station antennas. And how are you going to build it? Well, in the future, if we would like to have large arrays, we need new ways of building them. I will talk about two of those methods in this video. One is metasurfaces, also known as intelligent reflecting surfaces, and the other is holographic beamforming. So what is a reflecting surface? When you look yourself in the mirror, that is one example of a reflecting surface. And what happens when you have a big mirror is that when you have an incident wave coming in with an angle, say theta s, it's going to be bouncing off and reflected in a direction theta s, which matches with the incident angle. So that is where you have the strongest scattered wave. And if you have a very large surface, you have a wave that goes in and you have exactly the same wave goes out. But usually you have something that is distorting it and spreading it out when you have a finite sized surface. And an intelligent reflecting surface has the idea that you're going to mimic what a mirror is doing, but you do it in a controllable way. So when the signal comes from an RF transmitter, then it's going to be bouncing off it with a controllable beam direction and shape of it can also be controlled. And then you can, for example, focus it towards a desired user. This concept have some alternative names, software controlled metasurfaces, for example, or reconfigurable intelligent surface. That is some of the examples that have been used in the literature in recent years. And two of the popular use cases that people are talking about is energy focusing. That is when the transmitter sends a signal to a user, user one here, and in order to improve the signal to noise ratio, you put up an intelligent reflective surface called an IRS, and you control it such that the signal that is scattered off the surface is going to be focused towards the user, as if it were like a lens that focuses the signals. You make sure that the signal that comes from the IRS is constructively combined with the direct path. The other option is energy nulling, where you're sending from a transmitter towards a user 1, and then it leaks to a user 2, and you put up an IRS, you control it such that the signal is bouncing off it, and at user 2, it's going to be cancelling out. You have some destructive interference, so that this user gets almost no signal gain. And at user 1, you can get some kind of constructive interference, so you get a stronger signal there. And this concept has its origin in the reflect array antennas. So this is something that's been designed for many, many years. Here is a paper from 1997, which talk about it. In its basic form, a microstrip reflect array consists of a flat array of microstrip patches or dipoles printed on a thin dielectric substrate. A feed antenna illuminates the array, whose individual elements are designed to scatter the incident field with proper phase required to form a planar phase surface in front of the aperture. So what this means is that you have a transmitter, you send it towards a aperture, and then you can either design the shape of the aperture so that it bounces off in a particular direction, as you would do with a satellite receiver or transmitter, or you have a flat surface and you control it in such a way that you can mimic the same kind of thing. So here is an example of that in experimental setup. So we have a uh, surface with 22 times 24 elements, so there are 528 elements in total. We have a feed horn antenna that is illuminating the surface, and as you can see in the graph, you have a measured and calculated signal. It's going to be reflected in a particular direction, 
So there is a main beam there, and then there is some signals that are also going in other directions, because there is no perfect reflection or anything like that. So whenever I say reflection here, we mean reflection in a wide meaning, diffuse reflection, uh, not that kind of specular perfect reflections that you see when you look yourself in the mirror. To date, people are mainly talking about metasurfaces, and this is the same kind of concept, and we say that it contains small atoms, meta-atoms, small scattering elements, and these are sub-lambda size, where lambda is the wavelength, and this scattered incoming wave with a controllable delay, which leads to a controllable phase shift if we have a small amount of bandwidth. And we can also control the polarization of the signal. And why is they small? Well, the reason is that if you have a metal plate, which is 2 lambda by 2 lambda, and the signal comes in from angle 30, then it's going to go out in angle 30 and have as you can see here, the red graph is showing that the main signal is going out in that particular direction. If it's lambda by lambda, you still see that around angle 30, that is when you scatter the signal the most. But when you go down to say lambda over 5 times lambda over 5, then it's scattered in all directions equally much. And that is what you're after, because you would like to form beams not by having every element scattering things in a particular direction, but to create constructive interference from the, all of the elements to form beams. So the idea is that we look at the communication system all here. The signal is coming in from a particular direction to atom number n. We call a channel gn, and then we are phase shifting the signal at the surface, and then it's re transmitted, scattered towards the receiver. And then you have a channel from atom n to this user hn. And then the n-to-n -n channel is going to be gn times e to the power of j theta n, which was the phase shift, and then you have hn. So you have this product of three different terms. And the total received signal will then be that you take this n-to-n -n channel for all of the atoms, you add them up, you multiply them with the signal that you transmitted, and then you add noise. That is how you get your received signal. And how does this look like when it comes to the channel gains? Well, let's focus once again on one of the atoms. And we have a line of sight from the transmitter to the IRS and from the IRS to the user. And say that the distance is dg and you have an omnidirectional transmit antenna. Then the channel gain to an atom is the a, which is the area of the atom. Then you have divided by 4 pi dg, which was the distance squared. So this is the free space path loss. And then from the iris to the user, the channel gain at the distance dh is going to be the area divided by 4 pi dh to the power of 2. And that means that the end-to-end -end channel gain, when you take the product of the channel to the iris and from the iris to the user, uh, there, the phase shift is going to cancel out, you get the square uh, of the two channels, and you get the product of channel gains. So you get a squared divided by 4 pi dj dh to the power of 2. So you get the product of distances squared. So this is something that goes down very quickly with distance, because you get the product of two different channel gains. Each of them are usually small, but the product is going to be much, much smaller. That is why it's so important to have many atoms and to optimize them so that they are forming a beam in the right direction. So if this was a received signal, you can control the e to the power of g theta n. And how do we want to control them? Well, if you look at the signal to noise ratio, it will contain this sum over the elements g n e to the power of j theta n h n absolute value square. And by selecting the faces, so that all the elements in the sum are positive and real valued, which you do by selecting theta n to be minus the argument of gn minus the argument of hn, then you get all of the terms summing up constructively inside of this absolute value square. And for example, in our example before, every term is going to be the same, because you are, we're in the far field of the iris. You have a sum that turns into an n, and each of the elements have an absolute value square when you multiply them together that you got a divided by 4 pi dj dh. And then we had the square before, now we don't have a square but we have it outside. So if you compute everything you get n square a to the power of 2 
divided by 4 pi dj dh squared. So you have this n squared, which comes from that you collect energy over all of the n element, and then you beamform it towards the receiver. So that's the reason that you have n two times. And then you have the end-to-end -end channel gain for each of the elements. And this is what happens when you have a single antenna transmitter and single antenna receiver. You can consider much more uh, complicated optimization problems. When you have multiple antennas at the transmitter or the receiver or multiple devices, in those cases it might be much more complicated to find the best uh, phase shifts. But this is the main principle. Here's a simulation example for the signal focusing use case. We have minus 70 dB as the channel gain between the transmitter and the IRS and between the IRS and the user. And then we'll consider one line of sight and one non-line of sight case between the transmitter and the user. The graph to the right is showing the spectral efficiency on the vertical axis versus the number of IRS elements from 0 up to 1000. The upper two curves is considering the case when the direct path is in line of sight, so it's equally strong as the path to the IRS from the transmitter. And in this case, the dashed line is without the IRS, so it's just a straight horizontal line. And with the IRS, the red line shows a improvement, but it's not so large, because we already have a good channel between the transmitter and the user. The lower two curves is considered in the case when the direct path is in non-line of sight, so it's much worse than the channel from the transmitter to the IRS or from the IRS to the user. And in this case, we are starting off at a much lower performance, and we also see much larger improvement when using the IRS. Even when we have a small number of IRS elements, we can get a good performance improvement by configuring the IRS so that it is focusing the signals towards the user. In order, of course, to set this phase shift in a good way, we need to know the channel. And how can we learn that? Well, so far, I would say that most people in literature are assuming that they are known. And there are just some initial thoughts around how we can learn them. So we try to figure out what you can do, given that you have learned them. But what would be the main idea? Well, you have this IRS controller that can control the surface, control all these theta ends. And then somehow you need to control it by making measurements at other places. For example, this transmitting base station array here might have a control channel to the IRS controller. So maybe we send some pilots from the user to the transmitter or from the transmitter to the user uh, via this IRS and then you need to change the IRS simultaneously in some way so that you can measure different parts of the channel and in that way try to figure out how to reflect the signal in the best way. Maybe it's very important to use parametric models here where you can estimate angles, estimate the position of a user or so. If the user are in the line of sight of IRS, that might be possible. And in those cases, it might be much easier to learn the channel than if you will like, need to estimate an unknown parameter, one for each element in the IRS. And one option that some people have talked about as well is that some of these elements in the IRS will be active. So they have a transceiver chain. We can make uh, estimates by looking at the received signal in that way, estimate the channels, maybe together with parametric models so that we are able to deduce the channel without having input from the base station. So finally, where shall we place a meta surface to make a effective channel? Here we have a source that transmits to a destination and it's 50 meters apart, and then we put an IRS, it's 5 meters below, and then it's at the varying distance D1. The IRS have 1024 elements. And here is the total channel gain that we're getting, when we are changing this distance D1 from 0 up to 50, and we see that the best channel gain is when we are either close to the source or the destination. So that is the preferred choice put out the IRS very close to either the base station or the user. And in some cases it might be the base station at the best choice, and in some cases it might be the user. So what if they are co-located, the base station and the IRS? That is when we get what is called holographic beamforming. So in this case you have an RF generator and it's at the back side of the IRS. It's connected so the signal goes directly into the surface without having any losses along this way. And then the surface is containing this type of meta atoms that are phase shifting things in a way a bit like a uh, phased array, but built in an entirely different way. And you can get a thin form factor here, more or less invisible, 
deployment and the idea is that you will have an almost contiguous surface with these type of elements where you can phase shift it to send beams in different directions. So this is one embodiment of the intelligent reflecting surface where the reflection is actually going inside the surface itself. And this is essentially what the company Pivotal Comware is doing when they have the holographic beam forming as a trademark. And they have some product for 5G systems operating in 28 gigahertz and only have one RF chain and a very small array. But ideally you can in the future build much much larger arrays and have more than one RF chain so that you can send multiple beams at the same time. If you want to learn more about this topic, I recommend my follow-up video called Reconfigurable Intelligent Surfaces, Myths and Realities, where I'm going to talk about some of the common misconceptions in this area.